Hello wonderful people of the world. So today I am doing a Q&A. Um, it's something I've been wanting to do for a while, so I put out on my Instagram and all my social medias. What uh, would you like to know? Sort of what questions you want answered? So here is that. What is your favorite type of photography and why? My favorite type of photography is portrait photography. Um, I think taking photos of people is, is one of the best ways to get someone's character and, and sort of remember them by as well. Um, so I always try and make my photos and my portraits um, have a bit of their character and a bit of their um, bit of life in them sort of thing. Um, it's mainly because I get to meet a load of people and it's people from backgrounds that I'm not from so it's interesting to me to find out about you know different cultures and backgrounds and stuff like that. Okay so here's the next question how do I think technology and AI have impacted photography over the last couple of years? Um, to put it simply, I think AI has come a long way to help photographers, but also everyone's sort of seemingly worried about being replaced by AI or like stuff like Mid Journey where you can create images of people or, or places and, and it be really hyper realistic. Um, I'm not overly worried about that because at the end of the day, they aren't real images. They're not like, they're, well, they're 90% not real images. They're based off real people, but it's not a real scene. So my whole thing is being able to capture real people, real images, real scenes. Um, that being said, it's super, super helpful. Um, there's AI culling tools, there's AI editing tools. There's all of these different little bits of tech that help you out along the way and it's come such a long way in such a short time so yeah it's something I'm currently looking into and also learning a bit more about. <laughs> Do you have a dream subject or location and why? Um, so dream subjects I don't really have a dream subject I've not got a you know a, you know I've got to shoot this person sort of thing um, that's never been a thing for me. If someone wants a photo, I'll take a photo sort of thing. Um, dream location, I'd love to shoot on maybe the Isle of Skye um, or like sort of out, outdoors more. Because um, although I love being in the studio, I also love being outdoors and being able to go to places where perhaps I haven't been to or, or, uh, or I haven't been in a while. So yeah, Isle of Skye would probably be for me um, just because of the scenery. It's incredible and yeah. That's that. Do you have any me mentors or photographers who have significantly influenced your work? Um, yes and no. Uh, yes, because I'm always looking for inspiration. So I haven't particularly had a mentor. I've been self-taught pretty much my entire career. So everything I know I've learned myself. Um, that's through all manner of you know YouTube and uh, like reading and stuff. Um, in terms of like particular photographers that I that I get inspiration from, um, I would probably say people like Ivan Weiss, Ben Wolf, um, a whole load of people. Especially, I really like Joe Greer's work as well. Um, you've definitely heard of him, so yeah. Um, but I've also I also have uh, inspiration offline as well, so. Um, reading through books, reading through photo books. Um, I've been really enjoying the Accidentally Wes Anderson book. Um, that has been really, really cool. And seeing all the locations there is, is really, really inspiring to me because it's, it's just nice colors and it makes it look nice and it makes me want to create work that looks like that. Um, yeah, next question. How do you deal with the business side of photography, uh, like dealing with clients and marketing? Um, so dealing with clients is always fun. Um, nine times out of ten it's a positive exchange it's you know it's generally um, hey we want to do this shoot we've got this much money how can you help us um, I tend to try and help as much as I can um, f within budget uh, because I don't want to stiff my clients and, and basically say oh yeah I can do it but it will charge you this much and then potentially lose out on that connection um, the way I see it having that uh, business connection there is a lot more important than getting a quick fix of money um, because in the long term it works out better for you. Um, marketing wise I just I don't really do much marketing to be honest. Um, I put out in Instagram posts, I put out LinkedIn, 
Um, I go to networking events occasionally when they occur. Um, you know, I try and get myself out there as much as I can, um, but most of the time it's it's physical marketing. So I'll be going out and I'll meet people and say, oh yeah, you, oh, they're looking for photography, they're looking for video. That's how I help them out. Um, that's when I say, oh, I do that, that's what I do. How can I help? Here's what I can offer. Um, that's how I market myself. I market myself sort of in the old school way um, because I find at the moment social media doesn't particularly work as well for me. Um, probably just how I, I deal with that. But yeah, that's what I do on the business side of things. <laughs> okay, what's something you wish you would have known before starting photography? Um, and I'm assuming they meant photography full time, not photography in general. Um, so one thing I wish I'd knew about photography uh, before getting into it is how um, difficult the business side is, um, sort of tying into the last question. Um, the, the business side of it is a lot more complicated than anyone could really prepare you for. You've got to really look into um, you know, how to run a business, how to run accounts, do all of that sort of stuff. Um, because everyone thinks that photography is just, hey, get a camera, click a button, edit a photo, money. That's not how it works at all. Um, it's a lot of work. You've got to uh, find clients. You've got to, you know, work with people. You've got to work with people that maybe are a bit more difficult to work with than others. And you've got to sort of find that balance for yourself of getting the work in and actually doing all of the work and everything else. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of hard work, and eventually it pays off. Um, but sometimes it doesn't, so that's one thing you've got to bear in mind. That's what I wish uh, people would have told me before getting into this full time. <laughs> what is your go-to camera and lens combination? So my go-to camera and lens combination is the Canon R5 and the 24 to 70 2.8 from Sigma. Um, the reason that is my combination is because it's it's small enough to be able to chuck in a bag um, at a whim sort of thing, um, but also the 2470 is a, it's a staple of most people's um, photography kit and for me it pretty much stays entirely on my camera. Um, depending on situations I might swap it out um, for example, if I was to shoot across a room, then I wouldn't be using a 24-70. Maybe I'd be using a 85mm or a 70-200. Um, I think the, the go-to combination thing is a bit of a gimmick um, in a way because there is sort of, you, you've got to be able to adapt to multiple different situations on every kind of shoot. So that's what I'd say. So this one ties into the last question. Um, what accessories do you bring with you on a shoot and how do you choose? So one thing I tend to bring with me, I always bring a on-body flash um, and a diffuser for that flash. The reason is, um, if I'm at an event or if I'm at a shoot and it starts getting darker, maybe, it needs, maybe you need to fill the room with a bit more light, having a flash and a diffuser with you does make a huge difference. Um, and having a small flash like a, a non-body flash is really really helpful because it means that you can just sort of fill a room with light with minimal um setup so yeah i look at what i need to do and then i sort of go about choosing the accessories from there um, another thing i always keep on me is a microphone a set of lavalier mics um, just to be able to film video if i need to so yeah that's what i do and how I determine it. This next one, do you have any gadgets or accessories that you always carry with you? Um, yes I do, it's this little small rig, um, like multi-tool, uh, it basically has every sort of uh, Allen key and screwdriver and everything that you could possibly need to um, basically fix a camera or any equipment. Um, they're all standard sizes, so yeah, basically it means that I can fix my tripod, fix my mounting system, so it fix everything with very little pressure and, and, and effort. Um, just whip this out and yeah, that's that. <laughs> okay, so that was a Q&A. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, 
took a little while to put it together, so apologies for the delay, but um, I hope I answered all your questions. Um, if you've got any more questions, just hit me up in the comments or message me or whatever. Um, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, I think that's about it. All the links are in the description. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, uh, leave a comment saying what's up, and uh, yeah, subscribe if you want to. See you next time.